Hi guys, um, this is Lorenzo again. Um, I'm doing a review for general pathology because we started our class today, um, beginning our summer session, um, beginning my second year, my first semester of second year medicine. And um, one thing that I was actually interested in that we discussed thoroughly in class, um, as well as with my study group, and I just came back from my study group actually, and we discussed the concepts of pathology. Professor Dr. Sai, um, who is the associate professor in uh, general pathology and is also an assistant professor for uh, systemic pathology, which will be for second for next semester. And the main thing that we talked about, well, what he instigated and what he asked us was our definition of pathology. Well, he wanted to know what how we define pathology. And some people define pathology as the study of disease. Some people said pathology is the study of the connection between clinical medicine and um, basic science of medical school. And some stated that pathology is um, a particular study within um, a field in medicine, in clinical medicine, that observes tissue abnormalities. And uh, eventually we did um, um, congregate together and we formed particular pillars that best explains pathology. And first of all, in order for us to understand and comprehend what pathology is, we have to define a disease. A disease um, is, is defined as a, a deviation from the structure and the range and function of a particular organism or a particular tissue within that subset of organism. And any, and, and any um, deviation of that particular organism or tissue beyond a certain range, right? And basically, we ask the question is, in where does pathology stand in the field of medicine? And the answer to that is it is it is a connection between basic science and clinical science. And what uh, we figured out was that pathology is best answered in seven pillars. Right? There are seven pillars in pathology. First, the first pillar is called is the cause. What causes a disease? What causes um, uh, manifest to occur? And this is ter this term is called etiology. An example of etiology is a person who is, who is, in, um, who is suffering from AIDS, which is um, uh, autosome, uh, autoimmune deficiency syndrome, right? And the cause of this is the HIV virus, or better known as the human immunodeficiency virus, or um, which is basically a type of lentivirus, you know, which is a member of the retrovirus family. It leads to, um, as I said, AIDS, uh, a condition which is common in humans, uh, in which the immune system will begin to fail leading to life-threatening opportunistic infections. Um, and it, basically, you die of um, pneumonia, you pneumonia, you die of cancer, you die of neoplastic infections within the different parts of the systems of the body. Um, but yeah, that's basically, we'll cover that if, uh, afterwards. But basically, that gives you an idea of etiology. The second pillar that we talked about is mechanism. And mechanism of development of the disease. This is also known as pathogenesis, right? The third pillar is known as the manifestation of the disease, better known as signs and symptoms. An example, a sign is when you have observable physical or chemical uh, changes within a body that a physician can observe. Symptoms is what the patient feels. Let's say a patient says, oh, I have a fever. Now, the, fe the fever would be the sign. The symptoms that the patient is suffering from would be headaches, dehydration, um, I guess nausea, uh, some sort of um, congestion, etc. An example, like a, yeah, as, as I said, just remember the fever, right? And the fourth pillar that um, we surmised is the progress of the disease, right? And there's two particular questions that we that is um, that is necessary to perfectly um, observe this. The first is how rapid is the spread of that of the spread of that disease to other tissues in the body, and second is what are the other target sites of the disease? So an example, patient is suffering from a neoplastic infection, which is basically cancer or a carcinoma within the breast. Um, there is the cancer, well, before it becomes a cancer, there is a tumor. A woman, let's just say a 55-year-old female, a Caucasian female, uh, develops uh, a benign tumor, tumoric mass in her lymphatic uh, in her lymphatic, lymphatic region of her um, anteropectoral region, um, and that tumor, it then metastasizes. Basically, it it uh, it goes into the lymphatics, 
and it spreads and it basically it, it mutates and it continues to grow and because it uh, goes to the lymphatic system the lymphatic system um, circulates throughout the entire body so as a result this original uh, particularly um, specific uh, breast specific cancer now spreads to let's say her throat her ocular region her urogenital region her pedotical region and uh, it continues to do so until the patient of course has to go through chemo radiography or uh, or you know unfortunately the patient dies from this disease and um, these are the things that we covered right and then the fifth pillar is diagnosis basically diagnosis is it is what the disease exactly is it basically it's an explanation of what the disease is and the sixth pillar is treatment you know what can we do to alleviate this particular disease or this particular condition or the syndrome um, and there and there are two types of treatment there is prophylactic measurements or prophylaxis which is basically um, uh, a treatment that is used um, prior to the disease becoming uh, manifesting. Uh, an example is vaccines. Now, vaccines is an example of prophylaxis or prophylactic treatment or treatment measure. The second type of treatment is the proper treatment. Patient is suffering from, let's say, the swine flu, the H1N1 strain, right? Um, of course, we understand that uh, there are vaccines available for that, but in case that the person did not have the vaccine and just had experiences, um, symptoms of swine flu, uh, the proper treatment would be oselomivir or any avimir drugs that are antiviral, which um, have been known to be, um, cause a sensitivity to the, um, the influenza strain. And then the, the last pillar that we covered is prognosis. Basically, prognosis is, it answers the questions of can the disease be cured? Can it be managed? What are the possibilities? What is the survival rate? Are there any loss of functions for the person that have this particular disease? Will he, will he or she have a loss of function? Um, will normality be retained after the outcome? Um, basically, those are the kinds of things we covered. And um, yeah, these are the things that uh, covers pathology. And pathology is an extremely vast field. Now, we have two types of pathology. We have general pathology and we have systemic pathology. So general pathology basically covers the overall similarities between uh, different types of abnormalities of different tissues. Systemic pathology is site-specific, regional-specific, systemic-specific. Understand? All right. Well, this is my first pathology um, lecture, and I'll be making more. Um, I shall make more, and I uh, shall share. If you have any questions, just post a question. I will be happy enough to answer it if I can, if it is within my frame of understanding. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.